In this video, we talk about learning West Coast Swing while we focus on two important topics, connection and footwork. What's up, gang? My name is Brian B. This is Miss Megan. We are from West Coast Swing Online, the largest West Coast Swing website and YouTube channel in the universe. Anyways, we're talking about learning West Coast Swing. And we've got some great videos on uh, basic West Coast Swing and learning all the beginner patterns. But today we want to focus on two core concepts. That's the connection that we're going to need to use to advance in West Coast Swing and the footwork. And the reason why we're going to talk about the footwork is I believe it's going to help our connection. So if you guys want um, all the patterns, you can uh, go to our website, westcoastswingonline.com slash videos. There's lots of uh, beginner patterns you can learn there. We'll link up some resources in the bottom or maybe in the top corner, but let's talk about the connection. So if we've done a sugar push in West Coast Swing or a push break, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. This connection can sometimes be maddening to sort out. And we teach a lot of West Coast Swing, a lot of beginners, a lot of normal people just like you. And so we've seen all of the different struggles. So as we all know, we need to be connected away. We just call this an away connection and then we call this a towards connection. Some teachers have called this a leverage and compression. Uh, you engineers will be known as tension and compression, but towards and away. So this connection alone. So just setting in this position, we take an underhand grip as the leaders. Our elbows are kind of close to our body. We like to have a little bit of flare to that elbow, almost as if we're pulling out just slightly, just have a little flare to the elbow. Now, we're gonna connect our weight away, not through our shoulders and not through our hips, because as you can see, as my hip goes away, my connection goes away, and this is just not a good look. So we wanna keep our bodies upright, our head stacked over our chest, stacked over our hips. Then, second drill, if we've got this connection done well, we should be able to lean away with our hips. It's almost gonna feel like your hips are untucking because you're gonna get this little bend in your hip. And at this point, you should be able to follow your leader or follower up and down. What'll happen if you're not connected is one of you is gonna pull the other over, right? So if that doesn't work, you need to establish that connection first and lean away. So that's a drill number one. The second drill is to take that same connection and lean towards and lean towards, and in a way that if I let go, we'd barely be on the edge of our weight, right? Megan doesn't have all of my weight, so if she lets go, <laughs> I'm gonna move, right? So I'm controlling myself, and we're gonna talk about how we use our feet in a second in the footwork part of this video. Our ability to move our weight through our feet to apply connection away or towards. So as you can see, it's my ability to move through my feet, and we're gonna cover that in just a second. But the second drill we wanna use is I, as the leader, I'm gonna stand still. We're gonna have this connection. Miss Megan is gonna do baby steps and come towards me and maintain that connection. So notice it doesn't go away. She has to use her arms to manage it and she'll work herself away. And she'll come back towards and work herself away. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll keep that connection, I'll move myself in, I'll move myself away and I maintain that connection using my arm. This is gonna help us be able to maintain connection even as we're moving our body, especially as we get more advanced. Second part of this drill, a little bit more advanced, is to keep that, I'm gonna let go so we're more traditional handhold, and Megan's just gonna move around. She's gonna leave this isolated and she's gonna be able to move to her right and to her left, maintaining that connection in the hand so nothing goes away. If she didn't use her arm to manage this and her connection or fingers and she moved around, you can see that it wouldn't work, right? So then we're gonna do the same thing as the leaders. I'm gonna practice coming in and out. I'm gonna practice coming out of the slot one way and out of the slot the other. And this is how we're gonna get more advanced stuff. So those are the drills I want you to work on. Now, we have a belief that our footwork can actually control some of our connection. What I mean by that is, if we dance very plotty with our footwork, four walks, two, three, four, it becomes very difficult to main this, maintain this connection because even if we're really well connected here and we walk, there's a little plod to that step. We're unable to manage it. So we need to cultivate an ability, we're gonna let go for just a second, to roll through our feet. So imagine your feet aren't flat on the bottom, but they're like the bottom of a rocking chair. So as I step back, I don't step back flat-footed. As Megan steps forward, she doesn't step forward flat-footed. But I'm gonna roll as the leader from my toe to my heel as I take weight. And same thing for the follower, she's gonna go heel to toe. So we're gonna maintain a slow progression of weight through our feet. Now, we're gonna do the same thing going backwards for the follower on her right foot, my left foot. We're gonna roll through, roll through, roll through, roll through. So, if we did that drill again, maintaining the away connection, and we did four walks, 
we would be able to maintain that connection through our feet. So you notice our arms don't have to move to maintain it, but if Megan were to plod forward, go ahead and plod forward, boom, she would come out of that connection. And then you're told by your teacher to connect, and then we pull, and then we get frustrated. So drill number one is to maintain this connection. Practice sitting a little bit down, make sure you're connected. Number two, the follower is gonna move in and out of that. 2A is I'm going to be able to move in and out of that. And then we're going to build that into an ability to roll through our feet. And then really quick, we'll discuss how that would apply to the sugar push. As we start back, we roll through one. Because I take a shorter step two, she actually does come out of that connection into a four connection. But as she dances on to two, one, two, my body is slightly forward to absorb, we connect. We roll through three and. As I step her back for four, she's moving back through her foot. She continues through that foot to get to the end of the connection. And then as we dance five and, this is where the magic happens. As we roll through that final step on six, we're gonna roll our weight back. Now this is where the magic happens at West Coast Swing. I need to manage this through my arm, which is the same drill as us moving in and away, where I manage that through my arm and we continue on to the next pattern. So hopefully that was help, helpful to you guys as you move from beginner West Coast Swing and beyond and working on connection and footwork. We have a website that has some great resources. I really think if you're watching this video, you'll enjoy. So uh, Megan's gonna link it up in the description below and up in this corner, there's a beginner resource page that has all of our best resources, blog posts, videos, um, articles, all sorts of helpful tips that we have learned from you guys, our supporters on YouTube and beyond. So uh, head on over there, click around. Um, the website also has, oh, I've lost count. Closing in on 350 videos, 225 patterns currently. Um, so there's lots of resources on that site. So head on over there, enter your email address. You'll be able to talk to us one-on-one -on -one via email. We send out two really cool West Coast Swing patterns and tips each month to all of you guys who are signed up for our email list. So we will see you again on a dance floor soon.